Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm overwhelmed, quite frankly. Um, it's been a struggle. It continues to be. I'm glad I'm here, and I'm um, proud to say I've been a member of an organization that I think has made a change in the United States, not just with the Filipino community, but I think for the betterment of the society. Um, a lot of the um, essays that you're reading, um, or you will be reading, um, many of them deal with the political context of the nature of the work that Cindy, Renee, and Bruce so eloquently pose. But I think the element that needs to be drawn out is some of the human impact that this particular journey that we were all on had a different ticket, shall we say. We all got on the same train, but the ticket had particularities to it. And I think for myself, as a gay man, this was a particularly key period in society because, think back, this is the 1960s, the 1970s, um, LGBTQ issues were not completely understood uh, to be out there, you put yourself in jeopardy, period. Didn't matter where you were, even your own community would reject you. And I think one of the most enlightening elements that I could say about the KDP was that it was empowering. It did not limit what you chose to move forward in. And I know for myself, the issue of empowerment was intertwined with my identity. As a Filipino born in the United States, fourth generation, San Francisco, um, we're taught. You know, I was, I was always taught, you have to follow, you know, you deny who you are. You're white uh, inside, you know, that's what my parents were always trying to ingrain upon me. I had to reach for myself and find out what does that mean to be a Filipino, a Filipino American in the United States. And then on top of that, what does it mean to be a gay man or someone whose sexual identity was not the mainstream. So it was really difficult to try to figure out where was my identity. So this is a whole period for me when I began to go through that type of search. So I'm going to read uh, an excerpt which kind of captures that historical period. Uh, what the intersection within my life, the politics that I'm going through, a lot of the issues that were emerging at this point. And it's the, it's the essay, Hitting the High Notes. The room was dark and dank, but the green shade pulled all the way down to shut out the glaring noonday sun. From the room next door, voices could be heard, and the smell of coffee and cigarettes crept under the door. I finished putting my last item of clothing on and was trying and was tying my shoestring. Roberto Cruz had already begun fixing his side of the bed, so I joined in and tug the sheets and blankets to make them smooth. 
I tossed him one of the pillows for his side and fluffed up the other one for mine. I looked around the room one last time to make sure we didn't leave any traces. Are you ready? I asked Roberto. He just smiled, standing there wearing his skin-tight jeans and t-shirt. He only wore t-shirts, but he had a great selection in different colors and styles. <laughs> his left hand was on his left hip, elbow pointing out with his weight shifted on his right. That was a good lady. Anytime, my darling, he crooned in his lilting sing-song way. Outside, I could hear the exasperated voices of females asking one another, where are McGill and Bob? We have to finish rehearsal before the next meeting. <laughs> At that, I turned toward the door. The old hardwood floor creaked under our feet as we moved. I took a deep breath and turned the doorknob. Immediately, a flood of bright sunlight streamed into the darkened bedroom. The yellow kitchen walls were even brighter with the flooding sunshine. In front of the two unadorned, tall Victorian double-pane glass windows against the glare of the sun streaming in were three silhouetted figures, perhaps Christina Araneta, Letty Maglia, and Thelma King. I can't remember precisely. Mm -hmm. They were in various poses, sitting or standing around the kitchen table. facing the bedroom door. The expression on their faces was wide ranging from awe and disgust to amazement and surprise. Suddenly, it felt like we were in the spotlight as Bob and I stepped into the kitchen. He and I just looked at each other. I had a playful smirk on my face. He was deadpan. From different voices came cries and rebukes. Walangia, shameless, Diosko. My God, an animal. <laughs> Bob was just oh so nonchalant and said with exasperation, get over it already. <laughs> in, a in a composed voice, I announced, we were just clearing our throats by your response. It worked well because obviously you heard us as we hit the high notes rehearsing. <laughs> with that, Bob and I just smiled sweetly and with that, we all went off to begin practicing Alerta Katipunan on the Alert Katipunan, a cut on the KDP album, Philippine Problem Arise. You'll have to read the rest. <laughs>